the edge of real and cyberspace, there's one place you can go, and you found it. Welcome to the Nightwise.com podcast, the one and only podcast with hacks, tips, and tweaks for cross-platform geeks. My name's Nightwise, and I'll be your host in this episode of the Nightwise.com podcast, where I talk about how I use my iPad Pro. For more information and show notes, head on over to www.nightwise.com, that's K-N-I-G-H-T-W-I-S-E.com, where you'll find the links to everything we talk about, and of course, a way to subscribe to the podcast if you're not already doing so. Hey peeps, it's great to be back behind the microphone. I know I say that every time after a long hiatus, and it has been quite a long hiatus, but what can we say? The lockdown, the working from home, the stressy hours, it has all turned out a little bit differently than we thought it was going to be. I thought, you know, more free time, more free podcasting, more geeking out, but it didn't really work that way. At the end of a 10 plus hour day, I am mostly exhausted and have not found the time or the energy to sit down and talk to you, which is something hopefully I can change. Because it's funny, this show, I've already had it on the docket written out for quite some time, but I just haven't had the chance to sit down and record it. And today is Easter Monday, and believe it or not, outside the snow is falling. So any walks we wanted to do and any things we wanted to explore outside, uh, well, they're just, you know, cancelled, unless you want to get hypothermia. So, ideal to sit behind the microphone and to talk to you guys and girls about what I have recently purchased. I've got myself an iPad Pro and I wanted to share with you guys how I use this beautiful piece of technology that is, well, that is one of the most expensive but also productive tablets that I've owned today. There is an axiom that rings true in my life. The greater the importance of a certain piece of paper, the greater the chance that I will irreparably lose it. It's true. You know, give me a piece of paper of some importance and I will fail to be able to hang on to it. I will misplace it. It will be sucked down a wormhole. I will not be able to reproduce said piece of paper whenever I need to. Hand me a piece of digital information and I'll probably be able to dig it up 20 years later within 10 seconds flat. And that is why I love to go paperless. I've already gone paperless when it comes down down to reading because, you know, I haven't read a paper book in over a decade and I'm very proud of that. And I've been, you know, exploring the world of e-readers for for many years now. And when it comes down to writing down information, I have also been on that one quest where I would be able to do that. Tablets and iPads have come a long way and there have been many um, device in my life that somehow alluded to the fact that it would might be, that it might be able to assist me in going paperless. Might be the key, uh, the sorcery stone that would, you know, free me from scraps of paper and leaking ink pens. But as till today, that hasn't been the chance until, I don't know, maybe a couple of months ago. When I take a look at, uh, going paperless on a written form, in a written way, I was looking for something that would be my digital portfolio, something that would be portable portable, and that would, be, would allow me not only to consume, but to create content, to create written content. And I would also have something that would be a distraction-free device that uh, would allow me to, you know, um, concentrate. And the iPad is kind of that. And I've been, you know, doing my stuff on iPads for, I don't know, for a long time. Um, I've had an iPad since uh, an iPad 1. And whenever the, since ever we had an inkling of the ability to write on an iPad, I know I remember those goofy um, rubbery pens that we used to use that, that really didn't work. I was always a fan of trying to find a way to write on an iPad. Um... I was looking for something that would allow me to do that. I wanted something that would allow me to write on an iPad whenever I wanted to. And up to now, those attempts had surely failed. You might know that I've owned a regular iPad and an iPad Pro before I got my iPad Pro uh, two years ago, three years ago. Um, 
And I thought, this is it. This is it. This is the iPad I can write on. But the stylus basically sucked. Because whenever I wanted to write, the stylus was out of battery. And that kind of defeated the purpose of having a device that I could write on. Because I want a device that I can write on whatever, when, whenever I want. So I had two options when I went looking for some kind of tablet that would allow me to take notes whenever I wanted it. Something with somehow a rechargeable stylus. And I basically had two options. The Galaxy S7 and the S7 Plus and the iPad Pro. Now I did a lot of... Um, investigations on that you know how it is you know you dive into the internet and you go looking around and you start using start looking at review videos of of, of uh, tablets and stuff and you know the ipad versus the samsung and god knows what and the samsung galaxy s7 was quite an interesting device it's a beautiful pricey tablet that has a magnificent screen and that comes with a built-in stylus and it also comes with a built-in keyboard should you want to you can just snap on a keyboard and it just works the great thing is um it had a uh, samsung dex on it which would basically allow me to whenever i would connect it to a, a, a screen and a keyboard also have some kind of windowed interface with android applications now i've been playing around with samsung dex for for a while now and i gotta say it's a very promising concept a colleague of mine at one of the uh, assignments that i worked at had one and he basically brought his phone to work as his main device he would plug it into the usb c docs provided by the employer uh, hook up a keyboard a mouse and a monitor and he would be doing his thing he would connect to the citrix environment and he would be able to basically have his computer in his pocket and the promise of that universal device that would allow us to do that is one that still needs to be answered but Samsung DeX has come dangerously close I've worked with Samsung phones before high-end hooked them up to screens uh, keyboards and mice and found out that yes you can probably get stuff done on this it might not be a primary workstation but it would be very very interesting to carry around um, a device that would not only allow you to consume content but also to create content and to kind of work like a I don't know a, a portable thin client like workstation that you can take with you anywhere so that had me looking towards the uh, Samsung uh, S7 and the S7 plus for quite a while and this display is gorgeous the stylus is fantastic and people who love to work with graphics rant and rave upon it I was almost convinced there's only one downside whenever you buy an Android tablet and let's face it there are not a lot of them left I think that the S7 is probably one of the last decent Android tablets that are out there well it devaluates in value almost instantly I mean the resale value of an Android tablet is marginal compared to that of a regular iPad so the other option was to go for an iPad Pro and I was looking at the new iPad Pros especially for one factor that they had this recharging stylus the first stylus that I had on my original iPad Pro needed to be recharged with this completely illogical way. You can either shove it into the un underside of the um, of the tablet in, uh, on the lightning charging port or you would need a kind of fluky adapter and an iPhone charging cable to recharge a stylus which is absolutely ridiculous this is the worst thing that Apple could have ever made and I think that they should be incredibly ashamed of ever coming up with such an illogical device if they made this old stylus which they still use by the way um, have a female charging port all problems in the world would be resolved because you, you would just be able to charge it with your iPhone cable but no they had to add an extra layer of complexity and unreliability and that was one of the reasons why I decided to part with my old iPad Pro it has since been claimed by my wife and she loves it so I had two options
The new iPad Pro came in two sizes, 11.5-inch uh, and 12.5-inch. And I went like, oh, what am I going to choose? It was a hard call because basically I was going for like, wow, 12 dot, 12 and a half inch. That's huge. That's huge, man. I mean, I, I was coming from an iPad mini a couple of years ago, which I still think is the best form factor for an iPad ever, ever made, but really sucks when you want to write on it. So I, I thought like, you know, really, you know, 12.5, should I go for it? Should I go for the 11? So I decided to go for the 12. I've never owned a 12-inch iPad yet, so it was time I tried it, but one of the reasons that I really wanted to go for it was because of the fact that I love to have my apps side by side. Thank the Matrix for the latest Mac update, that uh, iOS update that finally allowed this. You know, I think it came somewhere around, I don't know, was it 12.09? Yeah, I don't know, no. Uh, I don't know, 13 something that really brought side-by-side uh, -side apps to the forefront. And I really like the working that way because, you know, on one end you can have a YouTube video open and then the other one you can take notes. And I needed the real estate. Now, I had side-by-side -side apps on my old iPad, but I didn't have the wrist space to put down my palm and my wrist while I was writing. And after quite a, you know, couple of minutes, that really got strenuous. So I got the 12.5 inch 260 gigabyte uh, Wi-Fi only model and I got it in black. Um, I wanted to have uh, a sweet spot when it came down to storage, not too much, not too little, 265 kind of rang the right uh, size uh, and I was not going for a 4G model anymore because quite frankly after the lockdown I I'm, it's, it's, there is no reason to use 4G anymore. I, I used to be on the train to the client. I used to be you know, out and about, and that was fine. And then I really needed that connectivity. But these days, if I still go out, if I still go somewhere, I am either happy to be disconnected or I can just quickly connect through my phone's hotspot. So I went for the Wi-Fi only. And I really liked what I got. Uh, one of the first accessories that I got was a UAG Urban Armor Gear case, a tactical case, uh, which I've gotten for many of my devices. I love UAG, but I do have to say I was fairly disappointed at this case. Um, it was just a too tight fit. I was really afraid that I would break my iPad whilst putting on that case. And um, there was just not enough room around the USB-C connector to really put in the charging cable. So I literally had to cut a piece out of the UAG case in order to put it on my iPad. And it was a little bit of a disappointment. However, I um, got another case from Amazon, which was basically a folio case that just flaps over it and snaps magnetically to the edges, which doesn't protect the iPad as good uh, than the UAG because you know those are tactical cases but I am still pretty pleased with it that it works. I got one of the magnetic styluses with it of course and um, I got a USB-C dongle which allows me to you know put in Ethernet and a micro USB card and several USB, um, USB uh, connectors. So that was my entire setup. I still had an older K811 Logitech keyboard lying around, which I don't think they make anymore, but this is a portable Bluetooth keyboard from Logitech that I've had for years and that is probably one of my prized possessions that I just keep on using and it's perfect. Uh, the iPad Pro doesn't have, one. well, they they do have these expensive Apple covers that you can use to to... Uh, you know, have a built-in keyboard, but I decided that it was way too expensive to do that. And I was not looking for something that I really wanted to have a keyboard. I have the K811, which is just as wide as the iPad Pro, and it works fantastically if I prop up the iPad Pro as kind of a mini uh, keyboard on demand. I have a Bluetooth mouse, and, you know, the combination of things works great. But... I mostly use it for note-taking. So aside from telling you what I bought it for, 
I now want to tell you about what I do with it. How do I let that technology work for me? Well, that's something I'm going to explain in the next part. for my iPad is taking notes. And one of the accessories that I got off Amazon a while ago was a screen protector that helps me protect my screen with a paperly feel to it, which kind of makes the surface of the iPad a little rougher than, you know, the standard glass. And I really liked that upgrade because not only does it feel like I'm writing on paper, it kind of sounds like you're writing on paper. Because when you add this sticker, and I'll put a link in the show notes, to uh, the, the, the glass on top of it, it kind of makes this sound when you're writing, just as if you were writing on paper. There is uh, another little accessory that I got, uh, which is a uh, rubber sleeve to slide in your pencil so you can grip your, your pencil a little better because, quite frankly, ergonomics? Mm-mm. Not Apple strong suit. Design? Yes. Ergonomics? No. Um, the previous stylus was absolutely terrible to wield. This one is better, but not perfect. So adding the uh, rubber sleeve uh, to that uh, really helps me in, um, in, in, you know, just, you know, holding on to the stylus, not too firmly. So my hands cramp up, but just, you know, so I can write. And that's mainly what I do on my iPad Pro. I use it for note taking and I use two very important apps and I use them separately. One of them is GoodNotes. Uh, GoodNotes is, uh, I don't know, a couple of bucks in the um, in the uh, App Store, and it's a fantastic note-taking app. It, c- it gives you different formats of paper. You can make different notebooks, different folders for your notebooks. You can have black paper, white paper, line, stripes, legal, whatever you want. And you have a myriad of colors and markers that you can try out. And I've been playing around with this for quite a while now, and I gotta say, I really, really liked it. Because before that, I have been an a OneNote user, and I still am. But one of the reasons that I got good notes is because A, it has the option to create a quick note using shortcuts. Uh, you can just have one uh, icon on your home screen, you tap it and it gives you a blank page, which, which I really like. Um, and um, it also uh, is not OneNote. <laughs> The reason is I tried to do all of my geeky stuff in GoodNotes and all of my professional stuff in OneNote, keeping my work and my home kind.
kind of my and my free time kind of separated because that is a challenge that I always have to work around trying to keep those two worlds separated because especially when you run your own business you really need to so good notes is done for you know personal stuff for study for quick throwaway notes and I really like the way that it allows you to be kind of creative with the notes that you take. And on the other hand, there is, of course, good notes. Uh, sorry, OneNote, OneNote, uh, which is available cross platform because good notes is only available on iOS. And it's available on Mac, PC, um, Android, whatever, uh, in the cloud. And I really adore it. I mean, especially during COVID times, I've had a hard time concentrating during meetings, you know, keeping your eyes focused on screens and not browsing something or looking away or, you know, stuff like that. So one of the ways that that really helped for me was by um, creating notes, you know, taking notes during a meeting. The great thing is you can share that notebook. You can open that notebook that you're writing on on your Mac. You can open it up in uh, your browser as well and you are able even able to share that window um, out during for example a team's meeting which is great I mean I'm, it's like I'm taking notes here I'm doing drawings and stuff like that and it gets synced to the browser almost immediately and giving me kind of this virtual whiteboard that I can draw on and OneNote has always been friend of the family something that I really really like and uh, that I use uh, profusely to take notes during meetings, uh, to write out projects for my company and stuff like that. So GoodNotes and OneNotes are basically the two note-taking apps that I really, really like. So uh, when I use uh, GoodNotes, I use it to uh, annotate YouTube videos or I have subscribed to these masterclass series. You know, everything that comes down to uh, annotating and taking notes. I use good notes uh, for for that. The great thing with uh, you know following YouTube tutorials is that some YouTube videos, especially if you open them up in the browser, not in the YouTube app, allows you allow you to go picture in picture, which is even better than screen side by side layouts, where you basically now have a pop up that just floats over your note taking activities and you can just follow along. So a split, split screen or picture in picture is, is really nice. Um, one of the tools that I also use to annotate, especially PDFs, um, is a PDF Expert, which is a great little application that uh, allows you to open PDFs, annotate them, but also sign them and send them back. Really, really nice. Uh, I use uh, PDF Expert quite a bit, not only to uh, write on uh, documents or sign documents, but also to open up PDFs and basically uh, have this virtual marker to mark out any interesting sections in the text, which really helps me uh, to concentrate and to study. When I need to read ebooks, I mostly send them to my Calibre instance and convert them to a Mobi, which I can then send back to me um, via the uh, Kindle app. The Kindle app is one that I use uh, a lot as well. And the great upgrade that the Kindle app has gotten if you're working with Mobi format is that you can open up a Mobi file or download a Mobi file onto your iPad and send it to your Kindle cloud directly thus enabling me not only to read it on the ipad i use the kindle app on my ipad but also on one of the two kindles that i have around the house so i have one in the bedroom i have one in the living room and whenever i sit down i i can just pick up that book wherever i am so i can just you know never lose the place where i'm reading and if i make annotations or in this case highlights the highlights get copied across so the kindle app for moby is seriously interesting. One of the other things uh, I study by is by listening to other podcasts, of course, and the native Apple podcast app, not that bad, actually. Kind of keeps track of what you're subscribed to, keeps track of the episodes that you're listening to. I don't know if it even downloads them, but, you know, who downloads anymore? It's all streaming these days. And I got to say, I'm very pleased with uh, with that simple app. And that I know it's really lame when you use the native apps, but it is so simple. It has replaced many of the podcasting apps that I've had before. 
and I also use it on the iPad Pro. Um, I have had, had, not anymore, an Audible subscription that I used uh, when I wanted to uh, listen to ebooks because I could also re listen to ebooks on my Kindles that way. But I don't have that anymore. And if there's one Swiss Army knife that you should not uh, have gone without whenever you have an iOS device, it is, of course, the app called Good Reader, which is kind of a multi Swiss Army knife of opening files and reading or watching content like that I, I, I like the app but I do have to say again the native files app of uh, of iOS has come a long way and has replaced a lot of that because the files app also allows me to connect to Samba shares in my house different cloud platforms like OneDrive uh, and that way I can easily pick and choose whatever document I want to edit, uh, annotate or save. That's for the uh, learning part where I use it for, you know, I use it for work, I use it for study, I also use it to relax. The great thing about the iPad Pro is, uh, especially the 12 inch, is the size of its screen. It's a pretty large screen and that makes it nice to consume content on. Uh, I use YouTube and Plex as my go-to apps uh, to, um, to, to watch video. And Plex also has the option to do picture-in-picture. Picture. I do need to figure out if I can get this working on YouTube as well, but I do know that it's not available everywhere. I know I can do it in Firefox on the browser, uh, on the desktop, but I'm not sure I can do it on the iPad, but sometimes I manage to get it working. I'm not really sure what I'm doing wrong there. Uh, Netflix also has this functionality, just like Plex does, to have a show run picture in picture. Basically, you have a small frame at the top, and meanwhile, you can do other things. And this is something that I really, really started to enjoy, uh, because that way I would be able to prop up the iPad on my lap, take notes, do stuff, and just watch and listen to whatever I wanted to in that wee little corner at the top left or right of my screen. Spotify is an app that I go to for my tunes, and there is, of course, one that I like even better. And if it's not some, uh, if it's not on your iOS device today, try using it. It's called Musi. Because Musi is where Spotify meets YouTube. It allows you to search YouTube for audio or for videos, but only plays the audio even if your uh, iPad or your iPhone is locked. So you can stream your music off of YouTube without getting a pro um getting a pro subscription. I really like that app. And uh, I've even thrown some money uh, towards the developer to get rid of the ads because it's a little bit ad supported. But I would highly recommend you to to try that out. So there's a little bit of work there. There's study there. There's relaxation here. But I also love to use my iPad Pro to uh, control my environment, my digital environment. I mean, there are a lot of things that these days have web interfaces. I have an Unraid server running. I have um, Plex running. I have Sonar running. I have Radar running. I have Transmission running. I have my NAS. There are like a lot of things that have a web interface. And what I've started to do is make shortcuts to those web interfaces on the iPad, on the iPad's home screen and just put them in a little folder. And I love the fact that we're on the couch and I don't have to open up a computer to, you know, quickly check something or adjust something or do something. So web interfaces are something that I really uh, love to use whenever I control my digital environment. And it's not like you're, you know, have to open up a computer and stuff like that. You just have it on your iPad. It's instant on. You just click it on and you can do whatever you want to do. When it's not via the web interface, it might be via via the terminal. So I use Terminus as an SSH client to log into any servers, Linux servers that I have. And uh, I also kind of uh, use the Google Home app to control the lights in our house. So that's my command and control iPad. So I read 
a book. Uh, I listened to an audio book, Dead Mac. Um, I the the reader will come to the writer will come to me, and I'll put the link in the show notes. Where one of the characters is the technician, and he basically controls all of the mechs and all of the action from his little tablet. And I went like, that's you know kind of cool, you know, having a tablet with you and doing everything you need to do. And that was something that I was really looking forward to, using this iPad kind of as a main daily driver when I'm not behind the desktop. And some people say, you know, the goal of the iPad is to be a a laptop replacement. I don't see that yet. However, now with COVID coming our way and the lockdown, I see very clearly, you know, I am behind the desktop computer, behind the computer doing computer things. And when I walk away, well, I have the iPad to pick up the slack. It doesn't have the abilities of a real computer yet, but the form factor and speed, damn, it's coming close. I do have days where I don't take my laptop downstairs. I just have my iPad lying around and I can get things done. So that was my, the way that I use my iPad on a daily basis, but I've also added some things there, uh, which help me focus, focus on getting things done quicker. Uh, One of the apps that I found is Shortcuts, which really help you to make little scripts that do things and keep keep you from kind of aimlessly browsing around. So I've made some shortcuts that help me, you know, get to where I want to go. Uh, There's a shortcut that I created that uh, goes to my unread pocket articles. I have one that reads my unread pocket articles out loud. I have one that goes to my Reddit saved items. I have one that goes to my YouTube subscriptions. I have one that goes to my YouTube watch later. You know, all of these things that you save for later are now accessible via one click. So I just basically made icons for each of these shortcuts and I've put them on my main screen. So my main screen of my iPad consists only of shortcuts Uh, and of, you know, uh, links to websites or web services. It's kind of like a dashboardy thing. I really wish iOS would do dashboardy properly, but it does uh, help me to to get that done. Uh, One of the things that I've also added there is what I mentioned, a little shortcut to quickly start a good note and start writing right away. And that is my home screen. Only shortcuts that go explicitly two um, sources of content that I want to consume and that kind of keeps me from being distracted. One of the last things I do, of course, on my iPad is um, create. Um, I run my company off my iPad should I want to. I have the uh, Teams app and Office 365. The recent Office app that has been released is also something to take a look at. And it's it's great. It helps me focus, especially when I need to write reports and I need to stay in the now. Uh, the non-windowed interface really helps. And I have access to all of my documents on uh, the SharePoints and the drives that I have in the cloud. And I have my email. I have my documents. I can do 99.5% of what I need to do for my company using only the Office app. The Logitech keyboard that I have, the K811, really helps. And I've also paired a Bluetooth mouse that I had uh, lying around. So I love the fact that the combination of uh, the Logitech, of, of the additional keyboard, the additional mouse and the stylus and the small form factor give me because it's really an office that I can put in my backpack quite easily. It's a worry-free interface with a very small footprint that if I go out, I can get stuff done. So do I really like this iPad? Does it really work for me? Well, I'll give you the conclusion right after this. So does this iPad work for me? Well, if I were to be a new user and I would have just purchased this device and I would be still intoxicated by this new technology smell, I would be raving about it. But I'm a seasoned user. I've been using the iPad for a couple of months now and uh, I am looking at it through a very serious and skeptical way. Aside from that, yes, I still love this thing. It's a big, and I do say a big step up from the first generation of iPad Pros. I mean, I've owned the first generation 11.5-inch iPad Pro, which is um, 
uh, heavy and, and clunky. This thing is elegant and it's light and it's fast. It's a lot lighter and of course it's also a lot thinner. But the biggest upgrade I think that this device has had is finally the addition of a USB-C standard, which does not only allow me to interface with other devices, like for example a docking or an external screen, but it also allows me to use my laptop charger to charge it, which charges it in no time. No extra chargers required, no lightning connector, no, I don't know, funky stuff, just works. Really, really pleased with this. Um, there is no longer a USB, uh, a, a, an audio jack slot here, but that's okay. I use Bluetooth headphones or I use the built-in speakers, which are downright fantastic. The form factor is also not too small, not too big. It reminds me of my very first 12-inch iBook, which was about the same size. And I do love that form factor. The stylus support is uh, very good. I've gone for the, the laminated display, so I put an extra kind of, you know, sticker on the display that helps me to uh, take away glare because it's still glary as hell, but it also has a rougher feel to write on. And the stylus is certainly a step up from the first generation one. The speakers, as I said, are amazing. Is this thing a laptop replacement? Uh, no, but I, as I said, I do use my laptop a lot less. Well, that's partly because of lockdown, but also because of the fact that I've gotten this iPad Pro. And that's all we have time for on this episode of the Nightwise.com podcast. I hope you enjoyed my little rant about my iPad Pro and how I use it and that it has inspired you uh, to use some apps or techniques you didn't really know about. If you have some apps or techniques of yourself, please let us know. Uh, I would say send us email, but nobody does that anymore. I would say comment below the podcast uh, on the blog. Nobody does that anymore. Why not join the Discord? Go on over to our Discord channel and there you can find everything uh, we talk about, you know, plastered on the channels. You know, we have a couple of uh, chat channels and we got a very lively community out there that hangs about and uses tech uh, to, uh, you know, you know, get things done and uh, <laughs> uses technology to work for them instead of the other way around. So should you. So join the Discord, subscribe to the podcast and if you haven't done so yet, tell a friend about this show and get the listeners and the numbers up so we can all enjoy the fruits of technology and of our geeky labors. Until next time, stay safe out there. Let technology work for you instead of the other way around. Bye-bye. You have been listening to the Nightwise.com podcast, the show with hacks, tips, and tweaks for cross-platform geeks. Send your feedback, questions, or start your own personal flame war by contacting us directly on feedback at nightwise.com. You can support the show by sharing it with your friends or writing us a nice iTunes review at www.nightwise.com forward slash iTunes. If you have some credits to spend, click the PayPal button on the nightwise.com website to help us pay the bills. Just remember, there is real life outside cyberspace. But it's not all that important.